we do not envy marketers. The majority of all products are, statistically speaking, mediocre. If everything was the best or the most or the otherwise hyperbolic, nobody would know what a bell curve was. But can you imagine a marketing campaign that crowed about a product's unwavering mediocrity? The Buick Cascada is another rare type of marketing campaign, the car is marketing. Sure, there will be advertisements for it, but the car itself is an advertisement for Buick. An inordinate number of the brand's 223,055 U.S. sales last year were in the Midwest. Get too far outside of the home turf, and sales slow to a trickle. It won't surprise you to know that none of the largest convertible markets in the U.S. are in the Midwest. So as much as the Cascada exists to bolster Buick's sales numbers, the brand's marketers don't expect all of the additional sales to be Cascadas. They're just as excited about the number of people they hope will come into the showroom to check out the convertible and then drive home in a new lacrosse or an enclave. Buick's commitment here is as small as the car's sales potential, the Cascada is just an Opal with a different logo. Don't feel cheated, Regal and Verano buyers don't, and they're more or less cruising around in Opal insignias and Astras. The Cascada shares much of its structure with the Verano but has a longer wheelbase, strengthened A-pillars, substantial underbody bracing, and a fortified rear bulkhead. All that reinforcement adds up to a convertible that doesn't so much tip the scales as it clanks it down, bends the beam, and flings two tons of counterweights about the garage. 4,000 pounds is some serious mass for a car this size. The Verano, at just an inch shorter and an inch narrower, is some 450 pounds lighter. The Cascada is nearly as heavy as the BMW M4 convertible, which has a retractable metal hardtop and a turbocharged 6 under the hood. But here's a sentence we've never written before, the Buick is notably stiffer than the BMW. All of that bracing pays off with a dearth of flex and zero cowl shake. The Cascada uses GM's hyper-strut suspension up front and a torsion beam with a watts link to locate the rear. Torsion beams aren't noted for enabling exceptional handling, but they are compact, which matters in a convertible, where trunk space already is compromised from above by the folded top. And Buick's engineers did a surprisingly commendable job of tuning the Cascada's ride. Our Buick dictated test route 160 or so miles from Key West to Miami, on Florida State Road A1A had maybe eight turns. But through dogged lane changing and several departures from the main highway, we were able to deduce that the suspension is gratifyingly firm to a degree that is slightly risky given Buick customers' preferences and allows little roll. The rack-mounted electric power steering is pleasantly heavy and quick, and while the brake pedal is mushier than we'd prefer, it's progressive and easy to modulate. If the drive location was in fact a defensive mechanism, it was more likely chosen to protect the engine. Like most cars in Europe, Opel's Cascada offers myriad powertrains. Buick took only the biggest gasoline one, a 1.6-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with a single turbocharger, then juiced it further. It makes 200 horsepower and, in overboost mode, 221 lbft of torque, 207 lbft nominally. 20 pounds per horsepower is a spec you won't find anywhere outside of the heavy-duty pickup realm, and the Cascada accelerates like the last diesel dual Ye Ram we tested. Between the Cascada's approximately 8.4 second plod to 60 miles per hour and the Encore's 9.3, Buick might have the slowest per capita lineup of any brand in the United States. The leisurely acceleration makes the hyper-strut the primary purpose of which is to combat torque steer look more like a marketing move than an engineering priority. The 1.6 may be slow, but it's perfectly smooth, and its soundtrack is never strained. A six-speed automatic is the only transmission choice, it is similarly relaxed and unobtrusive. Maybe heading to the keys wasn't misdirection so much as affirmation. This convertible excels on island time. Load up, drop the top, hang an arm over the door, and relax. The cloth top lowers in 17 seconds and raises in 19, with no latches or releases to pull. And it'll do so up to 31 miles per hour, your approximate cruising speed on significant portions of A1A. The interior is roomy enough for four adults. 
A smart system aids rear seat comfort, pull the release on the seat back, and the front seat motors forward. Return the seat back to its locked position, and it motors back. But when it touches a rear seat occupant's knees, it stops and scoots forward an inch or so to leave some wiggle room. In the forward cabin, the contrast stitched leather dash top and door panels impart a rich ambience. As in pricey German two doors, a robotic arm powers forward to hand front seat occupants their seat belts when they close the doors, and pyrotechnic roll bars deploy from behind the rear seats if the cascada senses an imminent inversion.